Hello, Psychonauts. Uh, we are here with uh, Psychedelic Renaissance Presents Preston Temple. Uh, Preston hails from Texas originally. Yeah, originally. Correct. And now you're in the Bay Area? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, uh, you, when we first met at the Shulgin's house, because we're that cool, um, you, uh, I, I met you, uh, you were, how do I put this in a question? You were discussing some things with Thomas Ray, the great Thomas Ray. If you wouldn't mind just letting us know how you got involved with him and his research. So I got invited to a meeting with the Shul at the Shulgin home. Um, of Thomas Ray, and I was told that the meeting would be discussing kind of the future of psychedelic drug development, particularly regarding ecstasy, as it were, or like MDMA, that sort of thing. And I was like, oh, cool, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to go up there and present them what, what I've been up to and how it's been going. Um, I've, I've concocted these two, if you don't mind me going into it, concocted uh, two things. One of them is called poly. That's the one on the list for yeah, 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 that's kind of the <laughs> yeah. more interesting thing, and that was um, just based on the notoriety that people knowing about it, that's how I got the invitation, that's how I met Thomas Ray, and uh, then come to find out he's doing something very similar, but more scientific, I would say. What I, what I was doing up to that point was, there was some scientific basis of it, and there was a lot of pseudoscience, too. Very effective pseudoscience, but... Lots of fields are like. Well, it's a field yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. So, I, um, nevertheless, I got the results that I wanted. I ended up there at the Shulgin home. I met Thomas Ray. And, um, and the rest is kind of history. I just instantly understood what he was trying to do and, and what the implications of it were. And since then, I've, I've kind of taken it upon myself to be a sort of ambassador for, for his work and for his... Um, well, this wealth of information he's yeah, dug up. I mean, he's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, insane. Yeah, it's, it, it's insanity. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, it is. So I, I um, mistakenly thought you were a chemist through all this and just found out you were not a chemist, but an engineer. Uh, just a big old nerd, really, is what it comes yeah. down to. If you wouldn't mind giving us a little bit of your background, how you got into this, uh, what led up to it. Well, it, um, I've always just had a fascination with psychedelics, with drugs in general, and I think that's that's kind of my superpower and I think my superpower like many superheroes is born out of a shadow and that shadow was being being diagnosed with ADD when I was 18 months old and then being kindly and, and then my parents kindly waiting till I was three years old to give me Ritalin and uh, at which point it wasn't really a choice like I, yeah. I just took it it was shoved yeah. down my throat if I, if I didn't want to and uh, so I was kind of programmed with this idea that I needed this drug to be okay, to fit in, to integrate. And over time, as I grew and matured, it, this developed into a fixation and a fascination with medicine. Like, what's out there? How does it make me feel? Can it help me integrate more? Can it help me in some way? Can it help other people in some way? Can I help other people in some way? And eventually, that's what it became. It was like, how can I use what I've learned and what I've experienced to help others? learn and experience more. Yeah, I feel like that's like 90% of the psychedelic renaissance. It's just a whole lot of people having that awakening, saying, you know, I want to help people because like, look, I was suffering and this helped and maybe it'll help you too, you know, yeah. uh, which I love. And on that, um, with therapy, people are getting, I think, MAPS uh, Canada, they just pushed into phase two or three or something. Don't quote me on that, two. I know, I know oh, here we're in three. Oh, it's here we're in three? Yeah. Definitely. Here. So then you would, uh, that leads me to my next question, you had touched upon poly mm -hmm. for a moment, which is kind of like um, a, a form of MDMA, but different if you wouldn't mind elaborating Ex Experientially, on it's like a form of MDMA, yes. but it is a combination of three um, research chemicals that are combined um, to create kind of a synergistic effect. Um, the idea is more the effects with less of the side effects. Yeah, that's your so, Yeah, so in this case, you, you end up with something that's cleaner, clearer, a little bit deeper, more mystical, um, because you can, since there's less side effects, you can go deeper with it. Yeah, yeah. And there's less, like, reminding you of your physical physicality. Um, little to no come down, no hangover, uh, really pleasant afterglow. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, you had also brought up uh, uh, Wally as another one. Yeah. Uh, that's another one of your babies, right? 
right? Yeah. If you wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, Wally is Wally is both like my the best thing I've done and also the biggest problem child. Um, it is it's a extremely powerful shamanic medicine. It lasts like ten to twelve hours. Um, it requires a really tight container, really good facilitation, or a very experienced psychonaut. Um, one of the catches is that it contains two dissociatives in it. So in that sense, it, it is a, an ego killer. It's just a, just a point blank ego killer. Yeah. And, um, like 5-MeO almost. Like, a lot like 5-MeO. People, can, experientially, people compare it to 5-MeO meets Iboga meets MDMA. Really? Because there is, there is kind of that like, that like dark night of the soul aspect of like Iboga where you like face your, like face your inner depths. But there's also this like, this feeling of being shot straight into the divine, like by Demio. And then there's this feeling of like compassion, forgiveness and love and empathy that you get from MDMA. Um, and this is all, this is all based on the, um, on the recipe. There's five drugs in the, in the cocktail. And, um, why it's a problem child is because dissociatives are metabolized at a different rate by different people based on genes. There's this yeah, one. You would say, yes, yeah. Like there's something that there's this one gene, yeah, the CYP2B6 gene. If you're missing that gene, you're just screwed. Yeah. It could last anywhere from like 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's it's rough because then like the other aspects of like the heart the heartfeltness is worn off and and like the profundity is worn off and you're just dissociated and weird at that yeah. point for hours just kind of spent almost yeah 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 confused disoriented so it's a bad look for some people sure and it's the best look for for, for others yeah cool. well on that you've mentioned uh, with why kind of I think you said it like kind of shoots you up into the divine so to speak. Uh, yesterday, during the Q&A, I believe it was the last question, um, a, a lady had asked you uh, something along the lines of, isn't this kind of taking the sacred out of it by knowing about it, like how it works? I mean, I, I have my own opinions on that. I, I don't necessarily agree with her perspective, but you were very polite and kind of took what she said as a statement and didn't really address it. And I was curious uh, as to your thought. Actually, even we were both curious mm -hmm. to hear your response to that. Yeah, I wanted to elaborate more on that. Um, so basically, there's something going on with plants. I don't know what it is, but they have a consciousness. They have an awareness. Sure. They are alive. <laughs> and, uh, and the same thing, like if you take toad medicine versus you do 5 meal DMT, it's a different experience. Like it just, it just is. I don't know how, I don't know how it is, but it is. And people are trying to figure out how it is. In fact, um, the guys at, I, I don't think they would mind if I named up, but the guys at Promega are trying to figure out what is in toad venom that makes it toad. Like what is in it that makes it so special? Yeah. So they have a special machine, they vaporize it, they capture what gets vaporized and they can't figure it out. Honestly, there's just such such trace amounts of anything but 5-MeO-DMT. Yeah. It's mostly just 5-MeO-DMT, but yet there's something, there's, something there. there's something there that adds the experience, that creates more of a guide, that gives you this sense of this little ethereal toad that's like there to guide your, your experience. I don't know what that is, and I yeah. can't reduce that to chemicals. Yeah. That being said, if we're talking about MDMA, LSD, anything that's synthetic, anything that's that is extracted to a certain level of purity, I feel more confident and comfortable speaking about that in reductionist terms. Sure. But I can't redu I can't reduce away the plant consciousness. Yeah. So that's I think what she was talking about. I want to acknowledge that part. Sure. And that's all I can acknowledge about that. Sure. Does that, that answer? Yeah, that actually does. That, that's that's a that's an excellent answer. Um, the last thing I did want to ask is the name of your talk was the future of psychedelic research or where the drug development. Yeah. Of, yeah. Where are we going with this? Well, I think ultimately we we're going to have highly targeted psychedelic therapy with highly targeted states like designer states. So in the past we've had designer drugs. Mm -hmm which is cool, we just tweak molecules until and try them out until we find something great. And now we're going to be intentionally creating designer states. Um, the, 
the therapeutic application of this is going to be stunted until the FDA has like a major overhaul in their rules sure. just because of like poly drug approval is going to be ridiculous. Especially if you're trying to say, well, we might use a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We don't really know what we're going to do until yeah. they're in the office and we kind of feel it out. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not going to Nobody wants to hear. Yeah, <laughs> no one wants to hear that. But, uh, but that's kind of what we're doing. That's, that's sure. kind of where we're headed. Cool. And um, for the underground therapist, that's very exciting. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of space to be mapped. A lot of, um, a lot of protocols to be developed. But that's ultimately where, where I think we're headed. Whereas in the past, um, if you, so the example I gave yesterday, if you want to go back in time and forgive your mother for something she did that just screwed you up in life, then um, you could take Iboga, you could do ayahuasca, you could, as San Pedro, you might have that experience. We don't know, you might. Um, I personally did not have the experiences that I wanted to on plant medicine. Plant medicine does not work for me the way it does for most people, um, but it works beautifully for me. Yeah, of course. Um, but our goal in the future of psychedelic drug development is to more intentionally create that experience. So if you say, I want to go back in time, talk to my mother and forgive her, then we want to have like a different reset. We, we understand that like... The histamine was one of the... Yeah, histamine yeah. is the one that allows you to speak to yes. like an other the like presence. entity, the presence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then alpha one is the one that, that's time, so you can like go back in time. And, and beta one too. Uh, imidazlin. Imidazlin. Yeah. Oh, I wrote it down too. Imidazlin. Yeah, it's, it's hard to spell. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it right. right. Imidazlin, right? You did. Grammar, grammar junkie right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's, uh, so yeah, the idea is that we would be able to, to create that experience for people with more precision. Got it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much yeah. uh, for this. This was fantastic.